Piriformis syndrome and sciatica. Piriformis syndrome is a hidden cause of sciatica. So what is piriformis syndrome? In piriformis syndrome, the sciatic nerve can become irritated where it runs under the piriformis muscle in the buttock region. And when the piriformis muscle irritates the sciatic nerve, it can cause sciatica. Piriformis syndrome is not a true lumbar radiculopathy, but it is called sciatica. So what is true sciatica? True sciatica is caused from irritation of the nerve root itself, which is part of the sciatic nerve. This irritation is caused by a disc problem, by a spine problem, and it is called lumbar radiculopathy. In case of the piriformis syndrome, the sciatica is caused by irritation of the sciatic nerve itself and not by irritation of the nerve roots. The diagnosis of piriformis syndrome should be done by exclusion of any other possible spine problems, which could be compressing the spinal nerve roots and causing true sciatica. If the patient complains of sciatica and the MRI does not show that there is a disc problem, then the patient probably has piriformis syndrome. The diagnosis of piriformis syndrome is made clinically with the pain in the posterior gluteal region. A high index of suspicion is needed in patients with buttock or leg pain in the absence of lumbar disc pathology on the MRI. So the piriformis syndrome is a condition of leg pain or sciatica due to compression of the sciatic nerve at the hip. True sciatica occurs due to compression of the nerve roots at the spine. In piriformis syndrome, the patient may have symptoms of sciatica that may be similar to disc herniation symptoms. So the physician will get an MRI, and if the MRI is negative, then that probably proves that the patient's symptoms are not associated with disc herniation, that this sciatica is probably coming from the piriformis syndrome. But we must look at the spine first and exclude spine problems, because this is the most common one. Piriformis syndrome is not common. In fact, it may be hard to differentiate between piriformis syndrome and lumbar disc herniation because both conditions can cause sciatica. Just because you have positive findings in the MRI, it does not mean this disc herniation or bulge is causing the patient's symptoms. There's a lot of patients that have disc herniation and disc bulge on the MRI that are asymptomatic, that does not cause any symptoms. Therefore, we must correlate the MRI findings with the clinical examination of the patient. The MRI shows disc herniation, and it's probably easier to tell the patient your symptoms of sciatica are coming from disc herniation. How do we know this is the primary source of pain? The patient may have both conditions. So the piriformis irritates the sciatic nerve. The pain will go down in the back of the buttock, the posterior thigh, and to the back of the leg. The patient will complain of pins and needles down the leg, and confusion may occur and the patient may be misdiagnosed as having lumbar disc herniation. The symptoms of aching, burning, and shooting pain down the back of the leg is very similar to the symptoms of sciatica. So when you hear the word sciatica, it is not a diagnosis. It is a symptom or presentation of a condition that can be nerve root irritation from a disc herniation or piriformis syndrome irritating the sciatic nerve 
or maybe from other conditions that imitate or impersonate sciatica. The causes of piriformis syndrome are not fully understood. Be aware of possible anatomic variations of the sciatic nerve. And there might be anatomic anomalies that lead to compression of the sciatic nerve. Tightness or spasm of the piriformis muscle may cause irritation of the sciatic nerve itself. The patient may have localized buttock pain increased by sitting or driving, or may be caused by overuse activities such as bicycling, and the pressure on the nerve will cause swelling and inflammation. They found that there are three common symptoms that the patient experiences in piriformis syndrome. This will include buttock pain, aggravation of pain with setting, and point tenderness over the greater sciatic notch. What are the clinical examinations that are commonly used to diagnose piriformis syndrome? It is the Lesug maneuver. The Lesug's maneuver stretches the sciatic nerve, and the Feder test stretches the piriformis muscle. The Lesug maneuver reproduces the pain by flexing the hip to 90 degrees while keeping the knee extended. I prefer to do the test with the patient on the side so I can localize the site of the pain, which will be directly over the piriformis muscle. The feather test is done by stretching the piriformis muscle to see if it is causing irritation and pressure on the sciatic nerve and reproduce the patient's symptoms. The test is done by flexing, adducting, and internally rotating the hip. If you are not sure, the diagnostic injection of the piriformis may be helpful. An MRI also may be helpful. It may show there is an enlarged piriformis muscle, or there might be anomalies of the vessels, or compression of the sciatic nerve. Treatment of piriformis syndrome. Physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory medications, and injections. Surgery is the last resort, and after you exclude all other causes of spine conditions, and after the patient has immediate positive response from the injection around the piriformis muscle. The surgery is the release of the piriformis muscle and decompression of the sciatic nerve. Always consider the possibility of piriformis syndrome when treating patients with trochanteric bursitis or in patients with sciatica, especially after failed spine surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.